Live, and we are all over the place. When it comes to where you can watch this, we're going to get right into it. Welcome to the counter offer number seven, eight. Six or seven. We should know. We should have known. We should have known yeah, before that's going fine. live. That's fine. It's all right. So we got the news is what's most important. The news is what's most important. The headlines, actually reading the article is most important right. and digging into it because most headlines, they sell. And we actually go into two articles that Eric has, two articles that I have. I don't know what he's going to talk. He doesn't know what I'm going to talk about. Usually it includes a lot of numbers. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> knows this now. It is episode six or seven. So yeah. <laughs> why don't you hit it? All right. So the first one for me is going to be about Zillow. Okay. In New York City, Zillow is not really that big of a deal, but they are creating a super app. Whoa. Super app. And it's actually part of their five pillars of growth. And it is to one of their biggest keys to the creation of the super app, which is essentially, I've been talking about this, Keller Williams has been talking about, or Gary Keller has been talking about this, and Zillow is actually doing it. So they had a disastrous shutdown of the iBuyer program, which means you'd go around and based on this Zestimate, which is complete nonsense, they would buy homes and it lost hundreds of millions of dollars. So they rolled that back and they're not doing that anymore. And their core audience, core audience is real estate agents. So they're going back to the consumer. All right. So they have pretty much every piece of data throughout the United States. And essentially what they're going to do is create, this is the CEO. They're going to create a single digital experience for consumers across all of their real estate needs, buying, selling, financing, renting, one ecosystem of solutions for all the tasks and services related to moving. They are essentially Jeez. saying, here's the contract, here is the moving service, here's the staging service, here's the financing service, and we're going to find you a buyer and seller. So anyone that says Compass is going to put me out of business, Open Door is going to be putting me out of business, all these iBuyer programs are going to be putting you out of business. Zillow. <laughs> Open Door is going out of business. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They're down. I think their stock is like a dollar. But I've been talking about this. What is your thinking when it comes to buying and having the entire ecosystem? Because it's a lot, you know, painting, renovation. Yeah, so I would just have to say that all sounds pretty complex, uh, but whenever I hear Zillow or any of these systems, it's all about the leads. Yeah. So, you know, whatever they're doing, whatever business they're expanding into, they want to keep you all in they their want system. is to have a yeah. qualified lead. And yeah. they'll sell that lead to somebody else, they'll do whatever they can with it, they'll try to monetize it in any way possible, but uh, yeah. They're coming up with all sorts of ways that they can capture your email address, turn you into a qualified lead that they can do whatever with. So, And ironically enough is that we were talking about their core, core audience is real estate agents, is that they take that lead and then they sell it to real estate agents. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And, and then they make a portion of the commission from that. It's, it's good. And ironically enough is that when the buyer now has a home, they're also probably going to get into moving services, painting services, electric. Like it's, it's endless once you're in the ecosystem. And Gary Keller has been talking about this for five or six years. Keller Williams said they were going to be doing something similar to that. One of the next um, items I'm going to be talking about, ironically enough, is Open Door, a different system that they're trying. However, the super app is here. And before we get into yours, because I know you like numbers, third quarter revenue is down 12%. This is Zillow. Uh, they just reported it. Revenues down 12% with a net loss of $53 million. That's my only concern is that they bled a lot of money from the iBuyer program. And if you don't have capital or any cash flow and you're year over year, if you didn't make money last two years, like you're not going to be making much money in the next couple of months. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's, 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 that would be my only concern is, is there third quarter earnings call. So that's mine. Yeah. Well, On to yours. <clears throat> they've certainly made some mistakes. Uh, mine was in the Wall Street Journal. Millennials are changing what it takes to succeed in sales. And 
It's a very good article, Charles. Okay. I mean, it really I'm, I'm already uh, down. I'm it already goes down. to show that times are changing, you know, and the salesperson has to evolve with the new environment and to be able to, you know, work with or have a client relationship with a millennial. And what does that mean? It means out with the old trips to the golf course. And it means I'm not good at golf anymore. Anyway, you know, but, yeah, yeah. Well, of course not. <laughs> but uh, you know, times are changing. One of the things that grabbed me, and we've talked about this a lot, is text messaging. And talked about it this morning. And you know, also you face to face zooms. Uh, but text messaging is so much more effective these days. A lot of people get a phone call and they're like, I don't want to answer this. Yeah. And they appreciate the fact they don't even want to call that back. you have. Yeah. I just got a text message as we're talking right now that well, I've been meeting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, and uh, it's a good way to reach out to your clients this morning before eight o'clock. You know, I needed an answer. I, I'd gotten two text messages, one from an agent and then one from my client. And it is. So they're saying the number one. It's better. Method. They don't want to hear from me at, at that time they don't want to you know, hear from you yeah just okay. in general all right get it okay <laughs> but when you are able to get answers and have a conversation with somebody very quickly uh about text message everybody appreciates that they're not wasting it so time. texting is the is number one a very good form of communication yeah yeah that's with the millennials well i'm not good at text messaging so we i have that. to <laughs> we have to improve on texting yeah well you know then you, you know it's funny I don't know how, I, I read another article totally separate where they're like, millennials don't like the thumbs up. Oh, really? <laughs> you know, not, not when you like the message, but when you send the actual thumbs up, that can be like offensive. <laughs> <laughs> so, so not only do you need to they learn need a safe space that for the thumbs up. texting is good, but you also have to kind of uh, know the appropriate. Get triggered from a thumbs sense. up. Yeah, yes, yeah, we yeah. are at the point of that. Yeah, I love it. It can be offensive. I get that a lot, ironically enough. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I get that a lot. It kind of is. It, it, I don't know how to take it. It's kind of like. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, I don't <laughs> yeah know it's like, I like a, it is a grunt. But yeah. it is kind of funny when you I like do, the actual text. I like when you hold down the message and then you do yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that's yeah. that's a little friendlier than like, got it, bro. I think I, I I love too many messages. That's that's the problem I get to kind of reel back. Yeah. I just got to like it, you know, or question it. Well, Keep that's them on a Wall their Street toes. Journal. I would say that it was a good one. You know? Who wrote it? A millennial? Uh, probably. <laughs> yeah. Listen, this is how we're going to communicate. <laughs> I'm gonna get get, used to how I'm we're going to communicate. I'm going to get call later. <laughs> oh, I'm going to text him. I'm going to text him a thumbs up. Yeah. Yeah. Love the article. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving on to your favorite company, Open Door. Uh, so they have a program. This is actually something that I had no idea. They rolled this out and they... I didn't know much about Open Door, to be honest. They're in the Texas, Austin kind of area. What's the big place that they kind of wrap into? Uh, you fly in Dulles. No, that's a that's totally different city. Dallas-Fort Worth. There you go. Thanks for helping me out. Uh, yeah, so they've rolled it out. There's hundreds of thousands of people in the area, and they're kind of like tech-friendly. So they have something called Exclusives Program for Home Sellers. This is crazy. So it's actually very unique. It's kind of like what we do with the off-market properties. So they essentially have, they save on the realtor. So that's their policies, or their whole thing is like putting it up, essentially saving the listing on the sales or on the listing agent, and they're hopefully going to go direct. So the person, it's like a for sale by owner. That's essentially what it is. But they have something called an Exclusives Program. The exclusives program gives access to homes that are less expensive than what it's going to get listed for two weeks later. So there's a two week time frame that they can get the home for, say, three or four percent. And it's direct to the consumer. So this isn't going on the MLS. This is direct to the consumer. And they're actually going to roll out something where it's going to be like a buy it now. So people in the last two years have hated the whole going back and forth and what, oh, you know what, this contract is canceled because I just got a cash offer and things like that. So what they're gonna offer now is an exclusive buying program where you could buy it. You literally press buy now at the price. There's no haggling. Huh. 
In an hour, the contract's going to be sent to you, automated. You then put down the earnest deposit. I think, I think they have it at 1%. You now have it for two days. There is no bidding wars, and there's no realtors. It's just to the consumer, or just to the seller. Two people want to buy it. It's whoever buys it, whoever gets the email. So wow. every Thursday, they get a list of properties that are exclusive, that no one else has access to. It's a subscription fee, and they literally go on and they buy it and they hold it. It's just yours for. What is the discount? It's it's pretty significant before it goes up. They like actually how have. Much? It could be two to three percent. Yeah. Well, see, that's what I mean. Like. You also have to consider like what is the listing price if if if, yeah, exactly. if it's going to go up so, at yeah, 600 listed, you know much higher and then you get to go in and get a two to three percent discount yeah but <laughs> you also were how many people did you compete with before true people that were financing couldn't compete with cash buyers or yeah. no, no contingency first buyers. sucker who clicks on it gets it yeah or you just say <laughs> i don't even i don't I, i'm at you know, my office and I can't leave and someone else saw it before me, they placed an offer. So you could literally buy it now and it's all done online. There's no agent, nothing. It's you know actually very unique. What would be interesting is if you were looking at homes that had potential value and you thought, I can flip this, you know, or I can do a couple renovations 100%. and then I can put it back on the market and get a higher price. So you automatically get like, probably, you know, get a discount on what it would cost to renovate it. Do that. Those are the people who sell are in it right now. Sell it yourself. <laughs> Those are institutional investors yeah. who are actually in it right now. Yeah, that'd be pretty. Uh, so they well, might even do portfolios. We'll see. You know, we'll and and the last thing on this is that the seller is not even in. You're not even in communication with the seller. You're in communication with Open Door. Yeah. So Open Door is doing the whole transaction, even the uh, inspection, and even seeing the home. The seller's not even oh there. Oh my gosh. Dude. The seller's not even there. You walk into the home you're going to buy with the inspector that Open Door allowed access to for the home and the inspection. Good luck. All right. <laughs> I don't know. Tell us how it's going, Dallas Fort Worth. It's, it's rolled out in your city yeah. coming soon. Buy it now. Yeah, buy it now. Yeah, it's, uh, it's an Amazon style instead of eBay. So Pretty that's cool. my article. Yeah, well, uh, other Times article, are changing. You could read about this everywhere. Uh, but over the weekend, there was the marathon. Uh, I still have yet to actually witness you know, this in you, you, Why didn't you do something like that? I, mean, I don't know. Anyways, uh, so there's always next year. But uh, the night before, there was a fire on 52nd Street, and it was a massive fire. Like 30-something-plus people had to go to the hospital. Uh, somebody had to go out of their window through a rope. You know, it, wow. it, it was horrific. Wow. And everybody was talking about it. I hadn't heard about it, but everybody, I had a show in the Midtown East and everybody was talking about it. And uh, the news is that this actually started because of an e-bike being charged in the apartment. Wow. Yeah. So. Wow. <laughs> funny enough, this e-bike also, uh, this building had a rule that you can't bring e-bikes past this point. I've never heard of that before. Wow. I've never seen that in a building, but this particular building already had in place a rule. They probably don't have the electrical do current to sustain it. Well, funny enough. It's like a hairdryer. Before and... this even happened, I got an offer on a rental apartment and the guy's saying, I just need a place to charge my e-bike. No way. Is, am I gonna be allowed to bring my e-bike into the elevator? Uh, to bring it up to the apartment to charge. Wow. And I was like, I don't see why not. I mean, yeah, yeah if you can. And then he, I was like, you know what? This would make it a lot easier. Let me go check in the bike room to see if they have an outlet. Yeah. And of course, they have plenty of outlets. But then there's a rule around uh, that you can't use the building electricity to be charging your it's bike. that high energy? Well, they don't even allow like workers with power tools to do it unless wow. it's approved so you know all of a sudden somebody can be using the building electric they don't have to pay for it anymore yeah. but the building manager of course said yeah I, I asked her I was like can he bring his bike up to his apartment she's like of course well you know that's with that's, all this that's happening right now with this yeah. fire in Midtown East I mean I think that it's gonna be it's gonna a be a big very deal very big deal yeah. I had no idea it took that much power these guys are flying, oh, by yeah, the way. They they're like motorcycles. They, 
there was a guy, I look both ways, every street, every time I cross, people have been killed in the city because of e-bikes. These guys are going 25, 30 miles an hour, and they're, they're whipping down Christopher Street, and like, even though they're half a block away, I'm still scootering. <laughs> like they, yeah. They're going like 25, 30 miles an hour, at least, and they're, it's like the bike probably weighs about 40 to 50 pounds. I don't know, I'm just throwing that out there. And then they're, you know, a buck 80, 200 pounds. Like that's a lot of force oh, getting yeah. hit by one of those. So it, it'll be interesting what the city says about that. Yeah, well, I thought about a couple of things. So in, if they're even allowed enough, in the bike lane, they have to maybe go with the cars. Yeah, I mean, also at the same time, like this is typical New York. You don't think address the problem until it happens. Yeah. And it's a uh, horrific. Five years later. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So yeah. we'll see. But, 2030. But at the same new, time, new law. this e-bike whatever it was, was sitting in the only exit to the apartment. So that's why, you know, they obviously just wheeled it in, put it on wow. the charger. They also say that it might not have had, the battery wasn't working beforehand, so this and that, but long story short, it was a lithium battery. And th I think that's the guy who had to go out with the rope. Um, no way. Yeah, but I was thinking- You can't put you know, that we, out We easy. were talking about it, I mean, one solution just for yourself, even if New York City says to have it or not, is that you should have a fire extinguisher in your apartment. Yeah. Do you have a yeah. fire extinguisher in your apartment? I don't even have a uh, fire alarm. Yeah, me neither. I, I, should, probably, <laughs> I should probably start but with there. With these buildings, a lot of them are pre-war or they haven't had upgraded electric. Yeah, and, you know, in a hundred years the, at least. All the appliances that you're plugging in, it's yeah. gonna, you know, this is a big thing. Yeah, so. well, those are the, uh, the four stories. Uh, glad we we ended on such a positive note. <laughs> I'm glad no, nobody nobody was I don't seriously hurt. So. Okay, that's well, good. Maybe serious, but no one died. So next Tuesday we'll be going live, and we're going to be talking about two totally different stories. You know, a lot of these are trends that are happening, things that are happening, and and because things go so fast, like say e-bikes that literally in the last two years exploded uh, onto the scene, and Too then soon, Charles. It, oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, give the thumbs up on a text message for millennials, and then we're talking about uh, not needing agents in uh, Texas, which is good. So if you guys are interested in anything for us to comment on, obviously leave it in the comments below, and we will see you next week. Talk to you guys soon.